hair comes down. Yep. Hey, what, uh, coming out of that game, what was on the offense's to-do list? Yeah, I mean, again, when you get a, a chance to play an actual NFL game in a regular season, um, you get to see where we're at where we're at as a staff, as well as the players. Obviously, there's room for improvement. Um, starts with the fundamentals. Uh, going back to what we've been doing in training camp, relying on your fundamentals, relying on communication between the coaches and players, and the players amongst themselves when they're out there. Um, all things that we feel are correctable uh, in terms of things that we need to work on uh, from the past game. And we have a great opportunity, a great challenge uh, to go down to Tampa and, and be able to see if we, uh, if we corrected those mistakes and, and get better at them. And Coach yesterday said he wanted to get Pitts and uh, Gage involved earlier. Uh, how do y'all do that? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he answered it the way, you know, Coach Smith saw fit in terms of that question. To me, in general for these players, right, anybody specifically in the skill position-wise, if you ask any of them, they probably want the ball early just to get involved, just to touch the ball. Um, but the reality is sometimes the coverage dictates where the ball goes at times. And uh, you might have good intentions to get someone the ball, and the coverage might take it away. And you're taught, and we tell the quarterback to go where the, the coverage tells him to go. And again, I'm sure everybody wants to touch the ball early and get involved. The reality is sometimes your intentions are met by the defense's intentions, and the ball goes somewhere else. But it's our goal to get our playmakers the ball. There, there's no doubt about it. And we feel like we have a, a good assortment of those guys. And again, it's our job as coaches to make sure we do that. Could you explain how, one last question, please? Could you explain how tough it is to develop and bring along a young offensive line? Yeah, I think, again, I go back to the fact that I think everybody who comes in the NFL as a rookie, they all have different development arcs in terms of some guys come in and it's as if it's as easy as they were playing back in college or high school. Some guys come in and it's, it takes a few games, and some guys, like myself, never really got it. Right, And so, again, it's all the different trajectories uh, in which a player comes in this league. And again, it all stems from the fact of going out there and trusting and relying on your fundamentals and your beliefs in what you do. Um, don't waver. Do what you're asked and coached to do. And again, going out there and gaining experience. Uh, again, there's no other substitute for experience for these guys. Um, every time you go out there, it's a new gained experience. Hopefully you collect enough of those, build equity with the experiences, and you can, you can bank on that and rely on it and get better from it. And that goes for all the players, regardless if you're in year one, game one, or you're in year 14, game whatever for Matt. Um, again, you're out there and you're trying to gain experience and use the experiences you had in your past to help you. And so hopefully with the younger guys who had a game under their belt, we'll continue to hopefully get better in that trajectory. You just said that you know, your guy never got it. Mm -hmm. Are there traits that I mean, you, you're, the, the tone was a little, I said mine a little jokingly. You, <laughs> you definitely hammered me, and I can't wait for that to come out. I mean, no, you're, like, you're, hey, look, my two stars statistically, the, a punter in this league might have better statistics than I do at that point. Point taken. Yeah, I, got, I got humility, I can promise you that. Yeah, but, when you, but because you had those experiences, are there things that you can see in somebody to tell whether or not they are going to get it or they're going to not? Yeah, sure. I mean, there's no foolproof in my opinion, but I think, again, you see how guys react to the situations that they're in and then how they recover. If it's a, even when it's a good situation, you want to see when a guy has success early, how does he respond to it the next week in practice? A guy doesn't have a great outing, how does he respond next week in practice? Again, it's all telling. Um, I'm sure everybody would tell you that they want to come in and work really hard. The reality is some guys can actually do that and focus and cut out all the outside noise and go do that. And then some guys, right, good or bad, might get caught up in what's being said on the outside and let them affect when they come in the building. Uh, again, I think it's one of those where it's just a pure mindset and it, you don't see it until it actually happens. So again, we just like players watch coaches, coaches watch players uh, to see how we react in different situations. Um, we're obviously all coming together, a lot of us for the first time. So players want to see how coaches react, and coaches want to see how players react through adversity, good and bad. And um, that's what's beautiful about the NFL season. Each week, if you think about the last week, good or bad, the next week is right there on you, and you better be ready to go. Is that something that can change for a player, or is it like once you, once yeah, you sure. see it or you know it, like eh, it's probably not No, that's a good point. Change. I think guys through shared experiences with – Either it's a young guy and he's asking a veteran, you know, how he goes through certain experiences, or you realize that, hey, I reacted this way, that wasn't a good outcome, 
the next week for me because I reacted that way, and some of it's trial and error. I think everybody in this league, for the most part, right, obviously has good intentions, wants to come out, wants to work hard, wants to perform well. The reality is, just because of the nature of this business and how tough it is, it doesn't always, help, doesn't always happen that way. But if you're made of the right stuff, it's about, if it's about the work ethic, it's about caring, it's about being professional, you like to think you have a fighting chance. Uh, now, that, now that Josh has been here for a few weeks and has kind of gotten into the system, how have you seen him uh, grow within it? And then now that he's probably getting fewer reps now that we're in like sure. a game practice week, um, in what ways can you identify and continue to develop him in this uh, climate? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, again, the backup quarterback, in my opinion, has a dual mandate. Right? The first one is to help the starter get ready to play. Um, the second one is you have to then get yourself ready to play with limited or no reps. So how do you go about doing that? Well, you talk about mental reps. Well, there's also after practice, your ability to have a plan to either walk through or throw on air to the receivers right, with no defense out there going through the plays. So one, I think one of the, the toughest jobs in the National Football League is to be a backup quarterback. Because again, when you're asked to go in there, it's probably not a great situation that just occurred. And you're not obviously operating with a ton of reps during the week. So what we've asked both backup quarterbacks to do is go in and understand that that's not an excuse. There's, uh, there's 32 other guys or 31 other guys just like you that has to do this. So what is your plan? So as coaches, right, we hopefully put a good plan in place for those guys to be ready to play. Uh, the reality is, right, these guys, it's a, it's a tough job. And so when you're developing those guys with the limited reps, you have to be very specific in what you ask them to do. And you got to see growth and you have to measure it. Otherwise, the words mean nothing. So if we're asking him at a certain point in scout team or after practice or in the plan to know it inside and out, and we test them in certain ways to see if they do know that, that's a way for us to measure where their growth is. Um, again, you asked probably 31 other coaches, quarterback coaches or coordinators, and they might have a different plan for the, the back of quarterbacks. I just know through my shared experiences of being one and coaching, obviously, the position, right, there needs to be a plan in place to make sure he's mentally right for the starter and mentally right for himself. So that's what we try to develop. Going back to last season, what was the thought process behind Cordell saying, Cordell's a guy we should get more carries to, we should look at differently position, positionally? Are you talking about in Chicago? Yeah, when you, when that thought process. Yeah, so let's, let's move him and. Yeah, so this way. again, there's there's been other teams with CP, right, who have tried to use him as a running back. Um, CP is a guy through my history in this league. I think I've tried to sign him multiple times. Most times he's left me at the altar. Uh, the last two times we were able to get him, in in my mind, just because of what I think of the person first and then the player. Um, I think he creates a. Uh, a different matchup than most guys in this league because, again, he was drafted as a wide receiver. He's also arguably, I don't have a vote, but arguably a Hall of Fame returner. So with the ball in his hands, he's dynamic. But what's underrated, in my opinion, when you saw him in the different spots where he ran the ball and then what we asked him to do last year, his, I, I love his vision, and he runs with an edge. And to me, at 230 pounds, at that size, it turns into a kick return sometimes for him, and anybody who's seen him hit it, he hits it. And so CP to me is a guy who I love. The, I love the way those type of guys play. They play hard, they play fast, they play physical. And so to me, CP, and then you can also motion him outside, which we showed in the last game. Um, I'm not sure how many corners want to come up and tackle that. Like, so the reality is he, he does provide matchups for us, but he's also, to me, a guy who can go behind the quarterback as the running back and run within our system. And so, again, he's a, he's a player when you're positioning guys in a game plan that allows you some flexibility. But as you guys saw on Sunday, he can also go behind the quarterback and run the football, uh, which I appreciate about him. Do you think the game is becoming less rigid positionally overall? I think about Kyle as a tight end. Uh, sure. Really, you know, That's a great question. I think you, you know, there, I'm, in my past, there's a, there's a, now he's a head coach, but he's a defensive coach in this league, as a head coach right now, and a long-time guy. And his goal was to get to positionless defense in terms of guys were able to put at any spot but get into any kind of front structure and all that just to cause you know, issues for the offense. And again, I'm not saying we're going down that path. What I'm saying, though, is you can see some of those type players right, starting to come into the offensive side where you can move them different spots, and now the defense has to have a plan for them. 
And so again, does CP fit that role? Sure. I mean, I, you can argue he's a running back. You can argue he can play at wide out. So a defense has to have a plan for him. But for us, we just love the fact that he's just a, he's a football player that I've seen in the past when I wasn't with him. And then since I've been with him, he's been everything as advertised. Does some of that come from basketball? Because I mean, basketball's gone through that too. Right. Where Positionless, no doubt. Right. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, if you follow the trends in the NFL, you know, I, that'd be a curious one to look at in terms of how many teams are really going that route. Um, again, you, there's positions when you draft them from college, there's obviously projections specifically at the tight end spot, right? Um, so there's guys that, you know, you look at players who come in this league that weren't running backs and maybe they were slot wide receivers and they get here and they become running backs. So yeah, I mean, obviously the flexibility helps, but again, I think it's case by case basis and all that. Time for one more. Uh, I, I just think like when I'm looking at the game on Sunday, Matt, his average per completion was quite low mm -hmm. um, in terms of yards per completion. And sure. I was just curious, is, is the, was the quick throw <coughs> something that y'all game planned and, and designed, or was that by design of a byproduct of the lack of protection? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say the latter part, but I mean, obviously the reality is the numbers are the numbers, right, in terms of where the ball traveled. Um, you know, again, give credit to Philly's defense for the way they wanted to play the game. And obviously that was with a lot of too high shell keeping stuff in front. Um, the reality is the way the first half played out, I think the first three drives, I think a total of 40 plays and three drives, 31 in the first two. Um, I think that was more of the way the game was going than the second half, right? The game obviously didn't play out and it became just a drop back game. In this league, the reality is you know, for the most part, when you get to a pure drop back game, I mean, typically they know you're passing, you're passing, the ball typically comes out a little bit faster, regardless of who's up front. Um, so again, I think it's a, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I think the question's valid, but I think it's a combination of a lot of things that occurred.